Good evening, I'm Lindsay Watson. There was a lot to talk about during today's community planning and economic development meeting in Youngstown. And it all centered around revitalizing downtown, something that seems more important now more than ever. First News reporter Brandon Jaycees breaks down what officials have in mind. It's our top story tonight at 10. The work in there was extensive. The meeting started with an update on the $90 million renovation to 20 Federal Place. According to Youngstown's Deputy Director of Public Works, Chuck Shasho, it's about 99% done. The building is fine to go in from a developer standpoint to show to the potential developers. Next on the agenda, business recovery. We, as a city, ceded $200,000 into the Regional Chamber Foundation. Thank you. Um, and, you know, we had to deploy some of those dollars out. A small amount of that money is going to be used to create a strategic plan to make an impact that will benefit businesses. We're also planning a relaunch, a great relaunch. The goal is to relaunch downtown in mid-October. A big part of that is creating a designated outdoor refreshment area, or DORA, in the city, an idea that's been mentioned in the past. Now we're in a, another crisis downtown, and we figure this is one of the... Um, tools that we want to use to, to bring back our downtown. The city manager of Columbiana was at the meeting and says they adopted Adora in 2019. He offered what's worked for Columbiana to go from multiple empty storefronts to consistently no empty storefronts. Our three, four prong approach, I, um, I would say was Dora, working with the storefront owners or uh, the, the owners of the buildings to fill their storefronts and, and also um, youth engagement to have them come up with ideas. Back in Youngstown, the Smart 2 network project needs to be completed and repairing what's damaged by the explosion and demolition at the Realty Building. We're going to put together bid documents to try to get bid documents out uh, beginning of September uh, so that when the demolition is complete, we can move right into the roadway. Christopher Cologne from Thrive Mahoning Valley also asked the city to consider becoming a certified welcoming city that would put policies in place to welcome newcomers into the city bringing with it benefits. In other communities across the state, uh, like Toledo and down uh, in Columbus, they've seen uh, national sporting events uh, be, see, have interest in their communities and get contracts because they've been had this designation. After all that, the hour 10-minute meeting ended. The committee plans to meet again September 10th. Reporting for WKBN 27 First News, I'm Brandon Jaycees. Well, during that meeting, Councilman Julius Oliver brought up an issue tenants are having with local nonprofits. They say they're being told to reach out only to be told that they're not eligible for help. Nikki Pastorelli says she's heard similar concerns. She reached out to several area nonprofits and was told they're trying to meet everyone's concerns, but some requests are beyond their ability. But as Oliver brought up, some lost their place to live and work. In some instances, it's just disrespectful. Yeah. And then I can understand being unreasonable, but in that situation like this, I lost my job when I lost my home. Um, and I know there's other places you go. You go to the library, you can go to workspaces. Pastorelli said she would follow up with the organizations to make sure everyone is getting the help they need. Hi everyone, I'm Lindsay Watson. Thanks for watching the WKBN 27 First News YouTube channel. If you want more video news, subscribe to our channel and don't forget to download the WKBN 27 First News app for breaking news alerts.